Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your Sexy Ranch Hand co-host Calderness. This episode, we're going to be talking about some Avengers Forever news, some Nationals news, and we're going to be talking with special guest Alex Morse about running Hero Clicks events and all that fun stuff. This is episode 414. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six yeah. people think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, back some more. Let's attack Jimmy, because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Alex for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all those Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. And not always joining us in the studio, but joining us this time, special guest Alex Morris. What's going on, Alex? Hey there. Happy to be here. Awesome. Fantastic. We like to start every week off with made us happy alex you're the guest why don't you go ahead and get started all right so Good i had a lot of things that could make me happy this week but i know i'm not supposed to talk about all of them um right. so i mean being on the show of course uh being able to announce the stuff that that we're gonna talk about and being able to i mean spoiler alert having events back in my store finally after you know two years uh, but the thing that really made me happy this week happened today at work um, a small child, like, they're in a wheelchair and stuff, and they uh, they came in, and they were like, I really love your store. They, they come in all the time, but uh, I really love your store. It's so great. You know, they collect Kirby stuff, and we sell a lot of Kirby things, like plush and stuff like that. And he was so happy to keep coming and seeing us and talking to us and, and getting all of these things that he likes, that he made us a drawing. I'm sending you guys the drawing. Um, it's a drawing of Kirby as as the front of the store, like where you walk into the building. And um, I just love it so much. Like I saw it, and I was like, I'm gonna cry. Like this is the cutest thing. That's it's pretty so sweet. Good. Yeah, that's precious. <laughs> precious. Yeah, it's cute. And it's actually a pretty good drawing of. That's not bad. Door into our store. Like. Yeah, it's a better circle, a better pink circle than what I could do. <laughs> oh, I'm actually a little impressed. Yeah. Normally, like when a kid gives you a drawing, you're like, ah, oh, no, thanks, this is champ. Good. Let me put this on the fridge, I guess. <laughs> oh, it's actually like pretty good. All the listeners, we, are like, we, ha- well, we now have we'll it up know. in the store. Like we're displaying it. Nice, nice. Simeon, what made you happy this week, my man? Uh, what made me happy this week was man, not a lot. It was a pretty awful week. Not gonna lie. Like, oh man, uh, tell us about your clinical depression, Simeon. Work was pretty bad. Remember that time I told you on the what made me happy? I was like, oh, I was drilling and like the self tapping screw went through my oh, leg. Right. And yeah. I have like this permanent yourself. pit in my knee now. Um, so yeah, not that, but basically I was cutting an I beam up in the air. And the wind was blowing like 50 mile an hour out of like the south. So it just kept blowing the slag. And I didn't realize while I was cutting it, it was an oxyacetylene torch. I didn't realize that I was running low on oxygen. Like the, not me personally, but the torch was. Because <laughs> the flame kept like going, the flame kept going like white. And then I'd adjust the oxygen up and then go white again. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. So while I was doing that, I was basically just like superheating this steel while not being able to actually cut it because (laughs) the oxygen was like almost out in the tank. So I was just like pulling whatever was left. And so I've got these huge globs of like slag and one spewed out and the wind caught it and it flew it like onto my shoulder. So now I have like this black splotch on my shoulder where there's just several inches. I'll probably not that, not that extreme, but it's like a quarter inch of, flesh has been turned into like molten steel and stuff so i keep digging out little chunks of like slag and uh i should run like a magnet over it and see if i'm magnet ah simeon stop please you hurt me simeon (laughs) but then you know what i thought to myself i was like you know what sure it was hot and miserable and dusty and i was getting burned 
but it wasn't hot and miserable enough. I didn't get burned enough. So today at the farmer's market, I picked up some habanero or like Grim Reaper something ranch. Ranch dressing, you know, the safe thing, the thing that you use to cut the heat. I picked some of that up and uh, yeah, my brain is quite literally melted right now because it is some of the hottest ranch. I won't even say ranch. It is some of the hottest... What would what would I say? Uh, condiment Condiments? I've ever put okay. on anything. Like this is worse than like taco sauce that I've had. Um, it's borderline. It's hotter. It's definitely hotter than like Frank's Red and Frank's Buffalo. So it's like way beyond Tabasco levels. And it's ranch. It tastes so good, but it hurts really bad. My eyes have not stopped watering since I started eating a salad with it. All right. Uh. Well. I'll check back in with Simeon uh, for when he does his sixth What Made Us Happy This Week a few weeks where it's also he mentions food again or pain, I guess. I don't know. Oh, I also had but, boba uh, tea at the farmer's market. Oh. Uh, Tasted like a fan, but I'm glad you like it. So is that the thing that actually made you happy, the tea? Uh, it's part of the ranch. Simeon's kind of a glutton for punishment. Yeah. Yeah, truly. Yeah. yeah. Truly, am. right. So, uh, anyways, made me happy this week, and it is actually something that did make me happy. Uh, Evil Dead: The Game came out. I had to suffer through a long Friday of driving and hero clicks, and then suffer through a long Saturday of going to a cosplay convention and helping them run that. When I could finally, about uh, three hours before I passed out, I uh, could play Evil Dead: The Game on Saturday. Boy, howdy, is it fun? Um, like horror games game for you if you like evil dead it's a great game for you um if you got a brain it's a good game for you i shouldn't say that but uh it's spooky it's creepy it's got me looking over my shoulder one or dead it's gonna strike the trees are evil in the game that's rough because you'll just be walking by thinking it's a normal tree and then ah, it'll hit you and it's like ah spooked me a little bit made my heart jump a little bit but i like it because it's cool it's accurate so yeah i'm enjoying it uh i'm not good at it so uh, doesn't you know this game was it, announced how long ago like two oh, years ago Simeon. yeah like two years ago long enough has it yeah. met your expectations or is it like doing better than it has i would say it's easily met my expectations so i haven't been able to play it a lot like i said only three hours um i'm not big on like you know, pvp games i don't care that much um but they also have a uh, player versus so, like there's there's replayability to it so when the online eventually dies for it like a lot of online games do. Um, there is still player versus environment, so you can still be an you plus an AI team of survivors against AI demons. So I like that. I'm okay with that. There's also missions in the game. I hope they add more of these. These are these are actually really cool. Um, so they're pulled straight from the movie, and I'll try not to be too long-winded about this. Um, but like the first mission is Evil Dead 2. Ash has to go and dig up Linda and then take Linda's head to the shed and kill Linda once and for all, like kill dead eye Linda, like call it done. Right. So that's just been a really fun, like mission. There's only like, I don't know, six or seven missions. I can't remember, but um, there's only a handful of them. So I'm like, I hope they keep adding those like a mission every couple of months or something. So far I haven't cracked the first one. I'm not good at the game, but that's okay. I have tons of fun playing it, which is all that matters. So like, I think there's a lot of replayability to it. Um, if there's not a straight up story mode, the closest they get is those missions. But again, like I said, it's still fun gameplay. I still enjoy playing that. Um, but yeah, I'm very much a, uh, you know, if I want to be able to play the game without having to have uh, a bunch of people or playing online, you know, like a Red Dead Redemption, a Doom Eternal, stuff like that, where it's like I can just play the story. And since there's not really a total story, it's a little bit of a bummer, but there's a long-winded way of saying, of yes, it meets my expectations. The only thing that didn't was the Ultimate Edition. Um, I, I think it's lame when they give out a Book of the Dead. Personally, I would prefer, a, like, an Ash Williams statue or a mini boomstick, mini chainsaw. I'm just like, they've, they've, they've used the Necronomicon so much. It's, I'm just like, I'm, I'm over it. I don't care. It honestly creeps me out a little bit. I'm like, I really don't want the leather bound human face book <laughs> thing that I get. I would much rather prefer a statue. Hey, you, like you now I've got it out and use it to store uh, your tarot cards. Uh, I'm not, oh, gosh, Double see, I'm not going to do that. That's very lame. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, cause they've done 
we've done Necronomicon like DVD covers and all that stuff before, and it's just like to me. To be fair, this is the best one they've done. I will say that it's got like the most accurate like pages to like how they've used it in like Evil Dead Two. I think is the vibe they're going for. So it looks really really accurate. So from that standpoint, cosplay standpoint, I do love it like that way. But now it's also like the third Necronomicon I have because I've got like the one I made, the one someone made for me, and now I've got like this one, and I'm like I don't even like like. All of all the cool, like neat little trinkets in Evil Dead, the Necronomicon is probably the one I care the least about. Like I would definitely have preferred a uh, shotgun something, chainsaw something, whatever, you know. Um Yeah, like an ash statue would have been like way cooler than this. But that's the only bad part. Besides that, like the rest of it's cool. The skins are cool that you get. Uh S Mart Ash, Night Ash, the t shirt is sweet. Um the little postcards. I, I sent the Welcome to Michigan uh postcard in the dial h discord thought it was pretty cool anyways long-witted way of saying evil dead made me happy and just like doom eternal making me happy uh in 2020 it'll probably be the thing that i keep saying each week for the next couple of months (laughs) maybe but we'll see hey enough about all that cool stuff let's get into the news real quick simeon hit us with that nats news totally missed it last week but there's just no team sealed for nats like for some reason i didn't like register in my brain to be upset about it yeah um, but now it did so now i'm like ah we bummer. we did go over to be fair we went like almost extensively over uh well, we went over, over everything, everything and even though yeah. we didn't say it i still was like i didn't put together that it wasn't there yeah you know i mean yeah. so i'm not gonna go over the whiz kids announcement too much i'm just gonna say um, we were under the impression, I think, like most years, uh, obviously last year there was no um, nationals, and the year before that I don't think there was either. Uh, right. No official nationals, I guess, whatever. It was online or something. Um, normally, you can pre-qualify for nationals, or you can play in grinders. Just like in Worlds, you can pre-qualify, or you can play in grinders. You can also qualify by placing a certain place in like team sealed which is normally the event that pre is like the day before it's like the precursor to the big event the singles event um so not only is there no team sealed there's no real sealed to be had at all other than battle royals if you want to consider that a sealed or the uh three month x of swords event but that also doesn't qualify you the only thing that can qualify you for nationals at gen con which is going to be in august i think it's the first weekend of august the only thing that can qualify you is registering right now while there's still 64 slots at most open and there's definitely not that many open right now because people have already registered and some of them are already sold out so at most there will be 64 u.s national um qualifiers like up until Saturday, the day of, out of those qualifiers, they will take, I believe, the top two out of each qualifier and make their top 16 for the U.S. Nationals event. So there is no Swiss rounds. Your Swiss rounds are the qualifiers. And then the finals round is just whoever makes it out of the qualifiers. So there's no pre-qualifying. There's no anything like that. If you don't get registered for one of those qualifiers, you just do not participate in U.S. Nats, which is, I mean, that's just something going in you're going to have to be prepared for. If you're making the trip and you're paying $125 to be at Gen Con for three days, uh, get ready to shell out some money for some Battle Royals and for hopefully uh, the X of Swords storyline because those are going to be the only two events, Heroclix-wise, that you'll be able to participate in. Uh, maybe get your dice masters all hot and ready because I mean nobody's selling out of those. So, yeah, that's U.S. Nats news. Um, cool. It's going to be a real small event as far as what we're used to for HeroClix Nats. Little tiny little baby event. Um, currently, uh, as far as my attendance, I can like probably not gonna go. It might change, yeah. but so far it's looking like a no for me, dog. I will say. So the only thing, at this point, the only thing that would make me go, and the only reason I haven't pulled the trigger, is because I have no idea what any of the prizing for anything is. So if these battle royals are 
It sounded weird when I said it like that. If the Battle Royals yeah. are running Disney Plus or X of Swords or, like, maybe, fingers crossed, a new set that we'll talk about here in a second, um, if they're running something like that, it would be worth my trip. If they're just running, like, War of the Realms and Disney Plus, that's going to be, like, old hat. I need to be able to at least get like halfway to breaking even for one of these trips to make sense to me. So I'm looking at this costing like 700. I need to be able to have some sort of like prizing or something that'll hit about the 350 mark. Not saying that like that's the only reason I would go, but for an event like this where I'm pretty much just going to be stuck in battle Royals and uh, maybe I'd probably try the qualifier if I went down, honestly, yeah. like I might as well. It's only $4 entry. Um, but yeah, like it, it has to make sense monetarily for me. And so far we have heard zero about prizing. Not even like we don't even know what the person that wins gets yet. We haven't heard any of that. So until that's released, I definitely won't be purchasing a badge and I like won't be purchasing event tickets. And if by the time they say um I get a badge or I would get a badge and the events are all sold out, or like the at least the nationals events are all sold out, then I probably just won't end up going. Because no offense to Indiana, but I really don't feel like going there a third time this year. Okay, well, right on. So talking about Luke's news that I actually really, really enjoy, uh, as an Avengers fan, this is great for me. As a probably anything else fan, you're probably like, again, really? And I'm like, yes, really? Calder, what are you talking about? I'm talking about Avengers Forever, uh, a new Marvel Hero Clicks set coming out in October of this year. Uh, I'm going to read the solicit now. Across the multiverse, the Avengers answer the call. Marvel Heroclix Avengers Forever summons the mightiest heroes from every Earth to battle it out in Heroclix. Celebrating both the classic and all new Avengers Forever comic run, so both of them, which is pretty cool. This five-figure booster release features iconic Avengers heroes like, you guessed it, Captain America, Iron Man, and Doctor Strange as they face off against the likes of Kang the Thigh-High Conqueror, Immortus, and Red <laughs> Skull. The first time players can collect Ghost Panther, Winter Hulk, a different Winter Hulk, and the Invincible Ant-Man as they make their Heroclix debut from across the multiverse. Avengers Forever brings back team-up cards so that you can assemble powerful squads of heroes to unlock new abilities and make them stronger than to, uh, stronger together than they are apart. Ooh, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, anybody? Also, when you say squads, it makes me think superhero squad, squaddies, uh, or up, is that what they say? Squaddy... Time, hero up. That's what. It is. Time to hero up. And anybody? No superhero squad to kids TV show in like no, twenty eleven or whatever. That's no. the like. It's a good one. Really strange. It's actually pretty good. Limbs one. Strange limbs one. Like their heads are real big. Yeah. But then big, yeah. They got big. Hands. They got big heads. They got little bodies. It's it's okay. based off the the Hasbro superhero squad toy line. They did that with Star Wars and Indiana Jones as well. Loves that toy line. Um, anyways, it's actually a really good show. It's actually pretty clever. It's on Disney Plus. They actually have like a lot of adult humor and like comic based humor that you'd really enjoy. Uh, there's a great episode of Man Thing. I'm not going to get into it, but it's a good, it's a great <laughs> show. Um, in addition to everything else, Legacy Cards will also make their return to bring Heroclix figures uh, from across time back to join the fight, this time featuring popular Avengers, heroes, and villains. Add more characters with a rally ability to your roster this set, giving you more options than ever on the battlefield. Mission points are back as well, with some powerful villains work them into their master plans for victory. With more than 65 figures and all new team-up and legacy cards to collect, this set is one celebration of the Avengers that you don't want to miss. Alright, what's the breakdown? The set has 16 common figures, 14 uncommon figures, 14 rare figures, and 2 primes. 12 super rare figures, and 2 primes. 8 chase figures, 14 legacy cards, and the smallest amount of team-up cards we've had yet, yeah. 12 team-up cards. The, well, number the smallest of team amount of team-up cards in it. Well, set. yeah, in a full set. Ah, in a full set, yeah. yeah, yeah there has been like the, the onesie, twosie kind point. of things. Um, no, 12 team-up cards is very strange. I'm not going to say, like, strange in a bad way. Actually, it's interesting to me. Uh, but it is very a very low amount, especially since it's lower than the amount of legacy cards, which is that the highest amount of legacy cards in a set? 14? Uh, I think so. That seems like, the highest, like the highest the highest amount. legacy card and lowest team-up card. Um, the three legacy cards we have so far, uh, Rick Jones from Avengers Assemble, so hot 
little news bit there it is the first chase legacy right. uh, modok from the captain america set who they make a thousand times better than he used to be finally he can carry someone that's the biggest thing it's not uh, and then thor from supernova so we got a big spanning across different eras of hero clicks there carded non-carded and then oreo dialed which is really fun but man that rick jones coming back is so dope i mean he was so fun to play um super excited about that they, they fixed his dumb uh og spawning coming back to life thing made it simpler so there's no stupid game break hopefully i don't know yeah might, <laughs> i might find a way <laughs> who knows like uh so rick That's jones all, is coming yeah. out it's gonna be rick jones and the invincible ant-man uh that's going to yes. be Invincible Ant Man's going to be the LE, and Rick Jones is going to be the LE Legacy card, it's which the is the first time that's happened kit. for the Play yeah. at Home kit. So you'll not only get a figure and a map, but now a Legacy card and a pretty cool one at that. Also, oh, yeah, easy to collect. Good one. Um, the release day OP kit, because now we're doing Play at Home and Organized Play kits, uh, is going to be three copies of the US Agent uh, from the set. I, and boy. Yeah. Uh, and then five copies of the new map, which I'm going to assume is different than the Play at Home kit map. Uh, the Th Legacy Thor card and the Legacy Modoc card, but only one of each. And then one addendum slash instruction sheet. So it's weird because normally with these OP kits, uh, like first, like Judge, first place, and um, Fellowship would get one. Or first, second, and third, or like however your venue normally right. would do it. Um, yeah. There's three to give out, but the Thor Legacy and the Modok Legacy, there's only one. So you either have to split them, or they go to first, or like you know they're slightly rarer, which is interesting. Mm. But yeah, yeah. Uh, so just to quickly go over the Legacy. Well, first we'll go over the sculpts real quick. There's a Ghost Panther, which is a Ghost yep. Rider on a big Black Panther, and they're all flamey. Pretty cool. Probably from Warp World. Probably a chase. Skull. Yeah. Panther skull. Yeah, like means. a saber tooth cool. skull. Yeah. Uh, we've got a Captain America throwing a right hook. We've got mm -hmm. probably the creepiest face Hawkeye I have ever seen. He's very pleased yeah. with himself. Yeah. Kind of scary. Um, we have the invincible Ant Man, who's like torso is bigger than his bottom half he's like growing as he's jumping or something it's an interesting effect we'll see how it looks in person uh we've got as calder said thigh high kang with some real long purple socks and some like time flame stuff going on yeah looks, i don't know looks pretty cool e billowy flames i'm assuming this u.s agent is the le that we just talked about yeah. um so we get a U.S. agent similar pose to Captain America with a, the U.S. shield. Uh, Modoc coming in at 80 points, eight clicks long. Um, yeah, you can look him up online. But the uh, big thing is he he's a mission point figure. He generates two bystanders. Uh, whenever he generates those bystanders, they get the aim keyword. And then whenever somebody, let's see, Anyone with the aim keyword hits a character that hasn't been hit this turn. Instead of dealing normal damage, you can get two mission points. And if Modok is KO'd, you gain one mission point instead. So even if he's KO'd, you can still get mission points if you have aim keyword. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Uh, I'm going to put the Red Wing bystander on him and make Red Wing a aim agent because I want to. Uh, and then we've got sort of the Legacy thing. Thor. So... What was it? Rick Jones dropped by 30 points. He's 45 points. Works almost yes. the same. Yeah. Modoc dropped by 70-ish. He's 80 mm -hmm. points now instead of 150. Uh, and then this Legacy Thor is 125 points for 10 clicks long. He's got a whole bunch of special text, but essentially he's got a Mjolnir marker that we've seen similar before. Um, bigger thing is, though, for 125 points, he's a 12 for 5 top dial, which is pretty fun. <laughs> And then so that uh, is a uh, 110 point traction from his original uh, yeah. click. He's 235. And he's um, got power or... cosmic now. So I don't for think cosmic he originally energy? had the, or cosmic cosmic? energy. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Back straight, buddy. Yeah. Um, so if so, the one big thing with his Mjolnir special marker 
is uh, if you haven't put it on the map yet and you make a like running shot, charge, whatever, um, you modify attack and damage plus one. So he'd actually be a 13 for six top dial, all on his lonesome. Yeah. Of all stats to add plus one, they were like, yeah, attack and damage need to go up. Yeah, no that, other stat that five, clearly needs that 12 for five is dial. bad. Yeah. It's almost that's, the same stats as uh, mm -hmm. Iron Allfather for 300 points. I mean, the defense oh, yeah, is terrible, right? but other than that. That's yeah, bad. It's real bad. You have, to, you have to figure something out for his defense, but uh, yeah. But dope legacy figures. Also, the first time they've chosen legacy figures that I own all of them, uh, which is great because I own the entire Captain America set. I own every Captain America, so Rick Jones had to be there because Cap's popping out. And then uh, the store from all the ridiculous amounts of Supernova I've yeah. bought in my lifetime. So We've officially nice seen them. more dials from avengers forever than we have for x of swords Swords, <laughs> that's funny actually uh i love that that's hilarious so that's the news i'm excited for it some people are probably moaning and growing and uh that we're getting an avengers set before we get the final like x to dc set which yeah now it's rough i i'll sympathize with you there but uh that's the way it be that's the way it be. There's not there's not much change of things, but uh, we're, let's dive into the meat of the show here. Uh, we're actually running it on time, fellas, so everybody deserves a round of applause. But uh, like I said, we had special guest Alex. Alex, you are what? What is your exact title? I I always yeah. fudge it up. You don't own the stores. No, I, I'm uh, I'm the manager for one of our stores, but like okay. everything but handled. You. You are the manager of the Frankenmuth Stadium Store in Michigan, correct? Yes. Now, you are starting to finally, like, you're finally having organized play for Hero Clicks after, you know, everything, after a long time. So, break down, you know, you're running two stores, organized play for two stores, right? Bay City, Frankenmuth, and then you tell us about getting events back up and running. Tell us about trying to find players to play in the events. How has that process started as you transition from a time where you're not playing any games to now you're like starting to run events you want people to show up you want to grow a community tell us about like that process and how that's been going for you sure um so so for us returning for our specific case for turning to events um i'm gonna back it up to july of 2020 for a moment so <laughs> i know don't worry i'm not okay. doing everything just um, okay. when, when, when everything first shut down and I, I think a lot of people didn't fully grasp the scale of everything that was happening, um, you know, I was like, oh yeah, you know, two weeks to stop the spread. Right. And then, oh, maybe two months and then, oh, maybe two years, but, um, <laughs> oh, years. um <laughs> but, uh, so in July I had started gathering information of, like, okay, so when we do come back to having events, I want to take a good look at adjusting the formats of, we, of how we're doing things, all sorts of things, trying to make them be better than they were before we stopped. And I got a lot of data and feedback and engagement from people then, and I was like, all right, cool, so maybe, you know, maybe we'll be able to have events again in, like, September, October of 2020. Obviously, that didn't happen. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know, kept pushing the goalpost, pushing the goalpost, and it was a very frustrating experience. But I mean, I wouldn't go back and do it differently. Um, it's just it's so hard to predict anything that would happen. Right. Um, so train of thought. Um, the so like a lot of what we're seeing now with us, we we are officially returning to in store play, not just for hero clicks, but for everything um okay. we we haven't run a single in-store play event in either of our stores since march of 2020 we put away the tables and chairs like literally there was no place that somebody could sit oh, dang. um and um so with that finally coming back now it's it's really exciting for us um there's a lot that goes into it uh a lot of what we're seeing from the structure for Hero Clicks, and I've posted our June events already. Um, you you can look us up on the Win. It's just the Stadium. Um, you can look us up on Facebook, um, the Stadium Frankenmuth or the Stadium BC for the Bay City Store. We have a, a Facebook group, the Stadium Hero Clicks. We have a Discord server. Um, 
Our website is thestadiumbc.com. I, so any, I do have the Hero Clicks events posted. They're sanctioned on the win. I've got event Facebook event pages. Everything's all done on that end. We're still finalizing some of the other stuff, but I did have that stuff figured out a, a little earlier. Um, probably, maybe even by the time this episode, by the time people are listening to it, we might have announced all of the other events. But um, it's really close. But Hero Clicks is up. If um, so, there's a lot of variables that go into picking the dates, the times, and things because we do more than right. just zero clicks, right? Uh, I'm looking at the events, and we're seeing the uh, the weekdays, uh, yeah, the events at like two o'clock. So, like that's obviously a little different than what a lot of yeah. people are used so, to. So yeah, so um, the if you look at the events, you'll see that for June they're listed as um, for uh, Frank News, it's every Wednesday at two o'clock. Um, and then Bay City is every other Thursday at 2 o'clock. Uh, I'll talk about Frank Muth for a moment. I know that weekdays 2 o'clock don't work for everybody, but that's unfortunately the reality of it at, currently. Um, Frank and Muth, uh, that store is in a shopping mall. Um, we lo- Due to the space that we are in, um, we lose access to restrooms for about half the year um, at six o'clock every day, because the rest of the mall closes. We can stay open later, and usually we do, but we didn't want to be running events where you know there are potentially several hours where yeah. no one has access to a restroom. Um, so yeah, it's a recipe for for something so very unpleasant. We don't. Yeah, yeah. we don't. Yeah, if if we want to have access to restrooms, it's open. The mall's open later. On Fridays and Saturdays. Saturdays, because it's a tourist town, are crazy, crazy busy, and we're trying to avoid having weekly events of any kind on Saturdays. So that's that. Fridays, there's. Sorry, Calder, you can plug your ears. Um, we're, oh, no. we're doing Friday Night Magic. Oh, um, painful. <laughs> on a My Friday. problem with Magic is that usually they have like several events in a week Monday yeah. Night Magic, yeah, Friday Night Magic, Commander like, Tuesday. Bruh. Andrew Tuesday, yeah. I'm just yeah. like, all right, all right. Choose a night a week. Let's not be too spoiled. But if it's the only run in the one Magic events, messed up because I play Hero Clips on Fridays. It hurts me a little bit um, to see Magic take that spot. But eh, not playing there. It's fine. It's me deep, but it's fine. Um, Magic so, just so makes that's... me sad because it always outshines like Hero Clips with the amount of people yeah, it brings in and the amount amount of money it brings in. I'm just like, yeah. man, that could be us. And then I look at the three other people there, and I'm like, nah, never mind. It can't be. Yeah. I think the average Heroclix player spends more on Heroclix than the average Magic player spends on Magic. So I believe that. it, yeah. That sounds like a uh, Clix Busters, oh. actually. Oh. <laughs> a Clix oh. Busters oh. episode. Yeah, Clix we'll, Busters. we'll just go around possible. like some <laughs> comic shop being like, how much do you spend on Magic? You can find the data. Yeah. You can find the data. Don't worry. No, no, no. We gotta, we gotta be on the ground. Boots on the ground. Oh, boots on the ground. The people. Dang, dang. Boots on the ground. This guy. All right, all right. Uh, continue, Alex. If you can get Grant and Mahara to go ask people questions about Hero <laughs> Clicks. Oh, jeez, man. Oh, wish we could. Um. Anyways, so Oof. continuing. Um. Oof. Bay City. Um. The um the events are on every other Thursday again at two p.m. Now that could be more flexible. Um, This is the first... I mean, like, this is what June is going to be. But depending on how things turn out, that might be able to shift. We can can pivot. So, um, you know, if if you're listening and you're in Michigan and you want to play at our stores and you're like, wow, Thursday's at 2, these guys are idiots, um, message me. Um, I'm on Facebook. <laughs> uh, you could you could even message the store, although um, no one else working at the store is probably going to listen to this, and they're going to get really confused. Yeah. Um, <laughs> message Alex because he will fight you if that's your opinion. <laughs> Gosh, just uh, sign Alex up for that. <laughs> um, Go ahead. I won't fight you, but one of my employees um, is always itching to fight somebody, so he'll probably fight you. But um, accidentally registered for one of your events there, Alex. Let's click, but. Uh that oh well, now okay. you're now you're stuck you got to go there now. no i'm stuck i guess i'm playing marvel studios <laughs> i will Disney say Plus um, sealed on oh no 623 is my brother's birthday i can't make it that day oh no dang. 
Uh, uh, so um, Alex, your your brother. just to, like, to sidetrack the whole conversation a little bit. Um, you weren't already. Yeah. How, how do you come to like a specific day? Because I know we always pull people. And so we've got one shop that plays on Wednesdays, one shop that plays on Thursdays. Then we used to have a shop that plays on Sundays, but they're not really hosting anything currently. And it was always like, you know, one person would always comment, like chime in and be like, Thursdays don't work for me. Wednesdays don't work for me. Like, oh, I work, I work Wednesday nights. I work Thursday nights. Uh, I work like Sundays. You can never find a schedule off. that will work for every single person. Um, and like, ideally you find the schedule that works for the most people, uh, which is difficult, but then there are other factors to consider. I mean, we, we are still a business. We are, I know, shocker, trying to make some amount of money. Um, the, the events oh. themselves are, are, are actually kind of structured to break even, but then the idea is, Hey, you buy other things. But, um, the uh, as as far as how do you pick a day, uh, you have to look at, at the, the big picture of it. Um, now that's not to say you know magic just kick everything to the curb, schedule magic, then just fill in the cracks. That's not what we did, and that's not what we do. So definitely, you mentioned polling. Um, polling is important, uh, but a lot of times people will just answer stuff in polls, and it's like. What day works for you? And they say Tuesdays, but then the poll answer doesn't really indicate that they mean like, well, I mean, actually, like sort of Tuesdays, you know, maybe once a month. <laughs> um, right. So you, you do like, have. To oh, get no, I never in, I never intended on actually going to play Hero Clicks. I just wanted to tell you when I could have if I wanted to. Right. We've so had the a quality of data like that is really years. important. Um, Especially in a game like Hero Clicks, where there's not a ton of people playing, right? Uh, you need to be able to talk to the people and, and figure out. Like, I, I think, I don't remember if I was before recording or while talking. I forget what I say about two seconds after I say it. Um, we, we were talking to uh, some of the, a bunch of the people that were playing before we shut down, and a lot of them at the time were working thirds. Um, and it, like that's how they got into Hero Clicks is they they were friends at work and then one of them got into Hero Clicks and they're like hey you should check out this thing and then you know cascading effect of that get that whole play group in there and um, because they were thirds a lot of times before they were complaining about man like it's great when I can come and play but I don't get to do it often enough because like if I did I'd be able to play for one round and then I got to leave to go to work um, which like it's fun to play a game but like it's kind of crappy i'd almost rather just sleep in and um so so those people are really excited about 2 p.m and then we have other people that have really erratic schedules and are just like i can make any day of the week i just don't know what it is until that week so um that's one of the reasons we're not as worried about the weekday thing again i know it doesn't work for everybody but Based on our player base, that seems to hit the the best mix of people. Yeah, Does that answer fair. your question? I forgot what you actually asked. <laughs> no, yeah, it was just more of like a uh, general. So, looking at it as like a standpoint, like if I if I was new to like Hero Clicks and I wanted to try and get stuff going, um, determining like a day of the week, you essentially have to find a player base or like make one out of scratch. And then you slowly have to adapt it to, like, what their playability is. Because, yeah, we had, you know, you've got people that can show up every week until all of a sudden their kid's doing, like, football practice or, sure. you know, whatever. Like, sports is usually, like, a big thing for parents. And you, where, you definitely have some seasonal changes, right? And yeah, like, where it'll, in, it'll in cut, like, larger player bases. It's it's not as devastating because when you have a larger sample size, you lose some people, but you gain some people. But in a smaller sample size, you could just die. Um, right. It's tricky. I do think there was a surprising... So we, and by we, I mean um, my local wow. area, Krypton's been running games for almost a full year now. Um, it's been, yeah, it's been about a, open for about a year now. Whereas another store that I go to quite used to go to quite regularly, this is only like the third week that they've reopened the gaming area, and there was such a 
demand for play from that like group that was like they were so ardent about getting back in and playing at some point that they've had consistently like eight to ten people for those first three weeks which isn't like a lot but granted when we left in 2020 when we left like play there was probably like five of us on average like five to six so they're back in like steadier numbers and people are like forcing it to like work whether like regardless of their schedules just because they really need that itch scratched after all these years i guess And, and after we've made our announcement, like I've been having people message me or, or you know, respond to Discord or comment on Facebook, basically that same thing. Like people are so ready. It's so excited. And uh, it's it's pretty encouraging. Nice. So what was your um your running events before everything? Uh, I need to say it. What was the average attendance for you back then? Um, for Frankenmuth, the average attendance was probably the long ago now. Uh, the, the average no, was I know. Probably like, a... uh, I'd, I'd say average attendance was five, you know, like, okay. like low end four, sometimes three, which sucks, but, but low end four, sometimes we'd get eight. Okay. Look at your uh, win page. It's very and well filled and that's out. For, and that's for the weekly. I mean, like, every yeah. once in a while we'd run bigger events and people would travel, but. For just the regular uh, weekly events. If you were to run uh, weekly, continuing, let's say, at the, the Wednesday, Thursday type schedule, um, let's say you run a tournament, would you make that on Saturday? Despite, you know, because typically... Oh, you're like, like a more, more competitive level Yeah, it, those are typically um, held like a 10 a.m. Saturday type start. That's that's open as an option. Um, okay. I, I will say that in the summer in Frankenmuth, probably not. Um, okay. It may depend on the time of year because in the summer in Frankenmuth, just nothing even special happening. Frankenmuth is um, generates more reven- more tourist revenue per capita than any other place in Michigan. Oh. That's By a uh, just summer. Is it also like a Christmas time too? Oh, uh, cri- yeah, um, Christmas time, yes, but um, it's less. Foot traffic for Christmas time, but more spending, like okay, per sure. per person. I mean, that makes sense. Um, so uh, a Saturday in Frankenmuth, because of where we are at, without anything special happening in the mall or happening in town, we could probably have ten thousand people walk through the door. Wow. Okay. We we do have a door to the parking lot, and definitely. A, good chunk of those people are just coming into the store, walking through, and leaving. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I didn't know there was 10,000 people in yeah. Michigan. Ah, get, get out of here. Well, we get people that travel from Ohio and Canada, too. So. Oh, yeah. oh, man. Okay. There's yeah, like yeah. the big trillion of people in Ohio. Yeah. Canada is a pretty big state. You know, they cut the Midwest up into decent sized chunks, but then they were like, top hat of a state is just going to be huge. I don't know why. I don't know why they decided to do that, but no, I haven't Strange watched uh, yeah. History Channel, how states got their shapes in a long time. I'll probably have to check to see why Canada, uh, the, sh- the state shape of Canada is so big. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, so the events you have listed, you have some, <laughs> to get a semi back on track, you have some learn to play refreshers, which uh, don't say, it's just kind of like open play, learn refresh how to play free yeah. that's cool uh then that's you have a, some sealed... I will say that's an amazing idea because idea. yeah assuming that your like local area hasn't played in quite a while um there's probably a lot of questions especially since there was two major like rules revamps well i'll say one major one and then one like slight rule revamp in the hiatus that like people weren't playing so there's been quite a bit of stuff that's been changed and there's quite a bit of new stuff that's been introduced since these, like since a lot of players have probably played last. Um, now, unless they like keep track of stuff by listening to some really cool podcast like dial H uh, yeah, there's, there's probably mm-hmm. a lot of disconnect. So uh, how to play and uh, refresh kind of thing makes a lot of sense for me. And, and with that, my plan is to, I'm going to have 
the Wonder Woman 80th starter, like my own one that I that I bought and own, and also I'm going to buy the Disney Plus one when that comes out. Um, in theory, June 1st. We'll see. Um, hopefully by the time that this event happens. <laughs> but, um, uh, and I'm, I'm going to have those available for people to play. It, it actually is. It makes me really happy that WizKids made the, the figures with the two different dials because they are really good for teaching how to play. And um, I'm also going to make like a little printout to um, to give to the returning players because uh, I don't need to go into you know all the core rules of the game with them, but basically highlighting the big elements of the big rules change with Wonder Woman 80th. Um, right. Even like some powers don't even work the same since yeah. Wonder Woman 80th, which is still wild. Before right. how much the game changes. I mean, that's pretty corner case stuff, but yeah. It is, yeah. I charge running shot, a few other things. Yeah, yeah. Your your major ones still work the same. There's just a lot more. The stuff that didn't used to work with, like, the big ones now does. Uh, small stuff like, you know, perplex can't affect damage anymore. Um, yep. Yeah. Or yeah. you can you can um, running shot pen side range combat expert now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know, just how does plasticity work? I still don't know. Um, it's but yeah. Yeah, a quandary that we may never know. There's something. Uh, no, I, I fail. I will say failing a breakaway on hypersonic now uh, feels so much worse because it used to be yeah. only a one. Uh, and now that like one, two, three. I it's... feel like it doesn't feel as bad now. Like I think it felt worse when your chances oh, because were lower. Then you, when you do you fail, like, really... it feels worse. I feel like it's it was worse back then because like really a one I had anything but that and that's what I roll and nowadays it's like ah it's a fifty fifty I don't even want to get next to you you're right yeah ending hypersonic adjacent is pretty rough um, rough one yeah no so like the the biggest change is obviously like the design insight articles and stuff like that those brought around like the Wonder Woman 80th changes and then the PAC's been tweaked since then. Uh, with Empire, they like reworded a few of the powers, but essentially they all do the same thing. I would say, um, yeah, that's it is different refreshing because essentially if you know the basics of the game or you knew the game really well in 2020, uh, the only thing that you have to learn is like what you can't do anymore or like what your characters can no longer do or like now they can combo these few things where they never could before kind of situation. Um, but yeah, that is a good idea. I would say, uh, looking forward quite a ways to, uh, sword X of swords. Oh, sure. Have you, have you, uh, anticipated X of swords at all? Do you have a game plan for how you're going to do the summer organized, whatever, blah, 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 slop kit? Well, um, it looks like it probably won't be summer anymore, but um, <laughs> yeah, late uh, summer. Wah, wah. Um, <laughs> late, late summer. Uh, the uh, I mean, I've, I've looked at it. I haven't finalized like orders for it yet, but um, the uh, it, it is something that I'm going to talk to people that do wind up showing to these events, um, whether or not we want to do the battle royales or if we want to just try to do sealed with it. Battle Royales um, can be really cool with this, but it's so dependent on the number of people that show up. Right. Uh, it, it, I think it's in, with the with the cost it is to get these kits. Um, I think it's kind of lame to have like um, you know if you show up you pay this money for the for all of this stuff, and you do get more than just the packs. There's like participation promos and stuff, but you, you pay this money for this stuff and then you play one Battle Royale really lame um yeah so if we can do battle royales the best way that we could do it if it lines up this way what i really want to be able to do is to have enough people to have separate pods that we then pair cross pod round robin okay yeah that would make sense yeah so that you you get more play than just the one um, but like, let's say, for example, we have an event with nine people. We can do three three-player pods, and then make with that, if we do round robin, you can make it so you never play the same person twice in three rounds. Yeah, 
that'd be a pretty good idea as, as far as like sticking to the battle royale setting. Uh, mm-hmm. So we didn't really go over this in the podcast, but essentially the X of Swords kits, because it's four figures and one object per booster for the monthly boosters, um, WizKids has kind of suggested the format to be a single booster draft, like Battle Royale-esque, where I think it said you would keep your... Um, I think you your first your pick, object. You, pick, you keep your object and pick a figure. I and pick a figure, pick. yeah, and then you would pass. So you're passing three figures. Uh, it would be 20 well, roughly $20 at cost. So obviously that completely depends on... That's literally, if the store is selling the kit at like what they paid for it, it would I, be twenty dollars per booster. I have to look again, but I think at cost it's it's like eighteen fifty or something. Okay, so that's that's not as bad. But, but yeah, this this isn't great. really a set that you can do like a a normal two booster sealed thing for. And then WizKids format is like, hey, you know this kind of rare, hard to get a hold of because it's only a month by month basis and you might only have like one shop near you where you can play. Well, we're gonna make a format where you get one booster. Can you imagine, Calder, like, playing Age of Ultron and you show up and they're like, yeah, you can get one booster this month. How mad I would have been. Uh, That would be trash, dude. I mean, I I already pulled, like, Modam and Tess 1 enough times to be completely livid and hate that set altogether. But, man, if if I had showed up to, like, War of Light and they were like, yeah, it's month 4 of War of Light, month 3 of War of Light, whatever, uh, here's your one booster... I would have been like, what? You mean I don't get to pull Especially, two boosters and potentially get a chase or like a super rare? Yeah. Especially in this set with all of the different equipment. You do get equipment in each pack, but there's a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, because you're going to want to collect a lot of, like, a lot different. You know, what if I pull Bay the Blood Moon, but then I pull, like, the Scarab Sword? It's like, well, now I have to find somebody that's willing to trade me their Apocalypse because I don't have the figure that uses this sword. Assuming that they have traits where they can start with the weapons, I'm assuming that. I would like to think they do. Yeah, it's possible that they don't, but I would assume that at least a few of them will. For the record, I would be very happy to open Bay the Blood Moon. Oh yeah, no, that, absolutely. That character that's is that's cool. a no. Yeah. yeah, I like the idea that you have uh, set up for battle royals. It is especially well, you got to buy three boosters or something would be yeah. So. No, no. So, but, but, so I'm, I'm not saying buy three boosters. Oh no, I'm that's saying what I'm saying. That, no, no, no. I was saying like it, it was a rough idea, air thing. We should like, buy three boosters to play three battle royal game. Right. See, I like your idea with what you have. Oh, oh, oh it's like yeah, yeah, if yeah. you wanted to play three games, having to buy in three times. I right. see what you're saying. Or, or buy three boosters to make one full sealed team because <laughs> your weapons <laughs> are like. You know, 10 hey, we don't know. Your they, they might be now, they might maybe, be, uh, maybe pointed out cost like civil war. I'm guessing cost. I mean maybe this is putting too much faith in WizKids, I don't know. But I'm guessing in having four figure packs that they would cost the figures so that teams in sealed aren't just super short on points. I I do really like hope because of this format that's because why they're Battle Royale. <laughs> uh, because I'm still like coming off of the uh, Huntington's Battle Royals using Disney Plus. I really hope that this set has some powerhouse commons, uncommons, rares because Disney Plus has outside of the chases it has like three characters that are over 150 points. Actually, it might it might only be two f- characters in the whole set outside of the chases because I think um, yeah. Agatha is like 150, but that Prime Vision comes in at 200, and then that uh, Strange Supreme comes in at 195. If this set has a Battle Royal setting and you don't... It's so like this is for anyone that might be judging out there. If you don't uh, put like a point cap when we have all the figures figured out... And there's obviously like a discrepancy where like one figure has like a 300 point line. Like imagine a War of the Realms and somebody pulls uh, Iron All Father, and the judge is like, "Yeah, you pulled it. Go ahead and play it at 300." Like that's well, just. Rough. I do a question for you then. Like, like I I understand what you're saying, but in the example of Disney Plus, if there was to be that, 
what would you do if you opened um, Reign Supreme? So, Is, play him at wait, half. Does he only yeah. 185 points? So uh, the only the only thing that I can go off of is Worlds in 2019, where we were playing Battle Royals with X Men Dark mind. Phoenix Saga, and so because you everyone had a Colossal, there were some people that were pulling like the 33 point Sentinel, and some people that were pulling, I don't know what like the highest point one was, but like let's say Dark Phoenix who has like a top line and of like him. 900 or something, Nimrod or something. Yeah. yeah. So in order to cap like the two by twos from being just overwhelmingly like not only unscorable, but also just able to kill pretty much anything else on the board. They said no figure like two by two or otherwise can be played at over 150 points. So that meant dark Phoenix was actually a liability if you pulled it. Cause you could only play her at the 30 point line. So mm-hmm. anyone who pulled a dark Phoenix usually had to pass it because it was now like one of the worst figures on their team. Right. That's I, I, yeah. I, I so I would say that, you just cap um, it at 150. If you're over it and you don't have a lower point line, I I mean that's just bad on WizKids and I don't I don't think they usually do that though. Normally there's a lower point line. Yeah. Um but yeah. Alex, is there anything else you want to tell us about the uh events coming soon to Frank and Muth in Bay City? Anything you want to put out there? Uh, cuz I think a pretty good job explaining everything I don't have. Um, I just like, I just want to talk about a, l- to a little bit about the stores themselves physically. Um, sure. So one of the things we did during during um, time of no events in Bay City was we remodeled the entire store. Um, so I mean we've been running Hero Clicks events since Infinity Challenge and. Um, so if, if people listening in Michigan or maybe used to be in Michigan, you might be familiar with us. There's a chance. Um, so if you've been to the Bay City store and you, you come now, it's, it's going to look pretty different. Um, we bought out the, um, space that was next to us and the, the, the strip mall plaza, whatever that we're in. Um, so we actually cut a giant hole in the wall. And that is now the the play space. And we put in completely new flooring. We ripped out the 25-year-old or whatever carpet that had all those stains and stuff that accumulated over the years. We have nice new flooring. Um, we put in new lighting. We, um, we we actually built a new wall as well for to have like some storage space and, and, and things to be more organized with stuff. Um, the store, we, we bought new shelving. The store looks amazing. Uh, it's going to be a really great space to play in. I'm, I'm really excited about about that. Uh, in Frankenmuth, if you haven't been to our store in Frankenmuth, um, one of the big appeals to that space is that um, you walk in. If, if you walk into our door and you look straight forward, you'll see a big gate. Um, the gate will be open, presumably, but. Um, so then if you go out the gate, you are in a bar and arcade. Um, you can get things from the bar and arcade and then bring them into our store and consume them while you are playing games in our store. Uh, we actually do a thing with, and I'd like to find a way to, to make this work for, for Hero Clicks too, but I haven't, I haven't thought of a way to do it yet. But um, we do this thing with magic called Draft Draft, where you play a booster draft. And then each round you win, instead of winning any magic prizes or store credit or anything, you instead win beer. You get to go up to the bar and get something off the tap. And oh. so, like, it's a really cool thing that not many places can do, and we, we get to do that. And that I think it makes it for a really interesting That place. also sounds like a built-in handicap. The better you do, the drunker you get. Yeah. The worse you exactly. do. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you keep keep people in line. I like that. Only one free one. Yeah. Unless they're doing something else on their own time. I don't think they're going to get too messed up. But, uh, well, we'll see. No, I think well, it's a hilarious get, idea. Everyone gets one at the start of the first round as well. Oh, dang. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Help. We used to... So, I don't know if you remember um, Calder. We actually used to have a fourth venue in Omaha. 
Sparta. Yes, I do know. Uh, Sparta? Was it Sparta Comics or something like that? It was that? Sparta. Yeah. Not. It was, yeah, it was something so. like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. But, yeah, they, they actually had a couple taps and some, like, bottles and stuff. And I never drank while I played, but it was always, like, an option. I always just found it really weird because it's not, like, a normal option. Like, most gaming venues don't want to also have to, like, keep, like, their liquor license in check and, like, worry about that. It's normally hard enough to just, to like, run one business. But it was really unique and interesting. So it was sad to see them go. Hey, uh, I think there was a WKO there on St. Patrick's Day, and I, like, walked up to, like, the whatever area, and I was like, hey, can I uh, you fill my water bottle? And they're like, you need water? St. Patrick's Day? And I'm like, uh, yes, it's in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it quite uh, would have been cool. two in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, it's like, all right, yeah. And I was like, um, yeah. Uh, but okay, sweet. Well, if there's anything else you want to shout out again, Alex, let us know. So far, we've just posted the events for June, but that doesn't mean I don't have plans for July and onward. We have accumulated various things to give away as prizes for events um, in the future. Uh, we, we have a master mold. Um, we I've, I've got a Wonder Woman and Jumpa. I've got a um, um, Ultimate Warrior. We have... The Fantastic Four um, organized play kits. We've uh, we've got old promos from before everything shut down. Um, it, oh, and also the promos. If you do come to the the learn slash refresh how to play, which again is free, um, everybody gets a promo. Just <laughs> um, everybody. Um, and actually, my intention is because I I found that I'm I'm getting more. Um, action tokens that I know what to do with from Dial H at this point. Um, I'm going to take extra ones and I'm going to like make little packs of them and they're going to be things that people can win as well. Yeah, don't uh, explain them though. Just be like, just hand them out and they'll be like, why is Edward Shelton dressed as Thunderball? <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just um, So so that, that'll be fun. Um, nice. I guess speaking of your prizing scheme, it reminds me of something. I see on the uh, constructed events you have uh, entry for is buying a booster. Do you want to run down how prizing and stuff is working for those? Yep. So the um, like as far as determining it, I kind of looked at like cost averages to to stuff to make sure that we're not just like hemorrhaging money. And uh, uh, the uh, the way the way it works is um, you can buy one five-figure booster or buy three gravity feed boosters. And that will count as you're just, when you're buying it, be like, hey, this is my entry for today's event. Um, and we'll, we'll get you it. But it's, So you're not having to pay anything on top of that. You're just buying stuff like maybe you normally would. And um, it can be anything that meets those criteria. Now, we do have some old stuff we've gotten. Like, you can get a pack of sinister for five dollars that is a actually that might be a four figure booster technically how many packs were how many figures were in sinister four that's an knows. old yeah that sounds four. like four that's four figure five booster count yeah. it as five um, what a nice guy um uh so you can buy a pack of sinister for five dollars and that's your entry um if, if you don't want to you know spend 15 whatever dollars on on disney plus for example um, then, then there's options for that, or if you know, so just buy what you like, and then, and then, and then you're good. Now the prizes. Um, oh, I opened the wrong. Event. I was going to read the sealed thing to you, and that's the exact opposite of what we're talking about. Um, so the prizes are um, based on attendance. Uh, I found it difficult to word it without putting a chart, but the wind isn't great for trying to put a chart. So um, there's one five-figure pack added to the prize pool for um, each four players in the event, but like it's bracketed. So if we have five people, that's technically the second set of four players. So the um, if, if we have let's say five people, then pack for first, pack for second. 
Uh, if we have nine people, um, it'd probably be, I don't know that I actually determined the exact, I don't remember if it was going to be, I, I have it written down somewhere. I don't remember if it was going to be two packs for first, one pack for second, or if it was going to be one, one, one. Um, and, and so on and so forth. And let's say you want gravity feed packs, just like buying the entry thing, you could get three gravity feed packs instead of your one five-figure pack. Uh, in addition to the packs giving out, everyone that plays will get a promo, but the standing determines the order you get to pick from our promos box. So if there's something we don't have a lot of, if you're placing higher, you have a better chance that you'll be able to get the thing that you want. Crap. We've also got here too. So you're saying if I win, I could get some Eternals movie gravity feed boosters oh you could. you could like hmm would i would i like a booster of disney plus or would i like these no, you sweet want... sweet eternals? Yeah, eternals three eternals packs yeah that's three times the chance of pulling Ugh. a werewolf deviant or sprite the only two things i ever want out of that set i actually like the chases but they're hard to open well i mean if that's what you want to do more power to you uh okay yeah, or on way uh-huh. Uh, I guess. Uh, all right. Uh, now. I know you ready. guys haven't opened enough undead. Oh. <laughs> we have not. Need more. No. That, that actually. Uh, all right. We are ready, though, now to play maybe the game that's been sweeping the nation. Hasn't been in a while. Uh, Bad Samaritan. Likely to get more patrons now. Strange. But it doesn't take an expert. Ooh, I missed that music. That was just to my ears. What is Bad Samaritan you're asking? Because you're someone that has only been listening to the show for the past year and we haven't played it in forever. Uh, Bad Samaritan is a Heroclix guessing slash trivia game. I have chosen three figures and then one Golden Age figure. So the first year, all Modern Age. Uh, one Golden Age figure and then Simeon and Alex are going to work together slash by themselves because I can only give one point to one person uh, to try to figure out who these figures are. There's going to be three rounds. They're going to get a clue each round and then they're going to guess each round. Um, Obviously, adding up clues and guesses that were wrong as rounds go on to hopefully get it right by the third round. That's basically how it goes. It's 1 through 20 on the random number generator for clues. Simeon, give me give me a number. All right. The first number is going to be number six. Number six is going to be a named keyword. Ooh. This figure's named keyword is... Sinister Syndicate. Okay. Oh, let's see. Sinister go Syndicate and Modern. Modern. It will get no more than a minute for each guess. The show moving right along. I think... I'm going to pick Green Goblin. Okay. Oh, that's... Yeah. So, I was trying to think. It's obviously got to be Spider-Man and Venom Absolute Carnage set, because that's... Throw one know. out there, bud. Come on. I'll say... Yeah. Uh... You said Green Goblin. I'll go with um, I'll go with Venom. That's yeah, okay. That's got to be one. It's going to be neither of those. <laughs> Let's go to clue number two, figure number one. Clue number two is going to be number fourteen. Number fourteen is actually pretty solid. That is going to be opening attack power. Never mind. I lied to you that it was actually a solid clue. It's not. <laughs> Uh, this character's opening attack power is energy explosion. Guess for Green Goblin makes more and more sense, and yet it's not correct. I know, weird. Opening attack, well, it shouldn't be it shouldn't goblin? be Red Goblin, because I think that they got their energy explosion from the objects. Oh, no, you're oh right. yeah, I guess you're right. They get it from the objects, so never mind. Yeah. Um, All right, continue, though. Okay. I'm trying to think of okay, another the, figure that would energy explode, though. There wasn't like an electro or a shocker in that set. Uh, no. Was there a hobgoblin? The off brand goblin? There was a hobgoblin. I'll go with hobgoblin. All right, we have Simeon locked in for hobgoblin. The gobbler of hobs. I, don't know, I will just pick Norman Osborne, even though I'm sure he okay. doesn't have energy. 
explosion. Locked in with Hobgoblin and Norman Osborn. It is going to be neither of those. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Pew, pew. All right. Final clue is going to be clue number three. Uh, clue number three is going to be set. Uh, surprise, surprise. The set is Spider-Man and Venom. Oh, is it? Absolute carnage. Is it? <laughs> it is. Uh... It is. To be fair, there are two other sets with Sister Syndicate people in them in modern. Okay, so we Technically, got... it narrows it down. Oh, uh, yeah. By the way, guys, I already forgot to say this in the beginning. Um, not for Simeon and Alex here, but for you. Yeah, you, the listener. Uh, if you want to pause the podcast before Simeon and Alex take their guesses to see if you got it right, uh, feel free to do so. Also, they, you know, spend enough time thinking about their guesses that uh, you should you might be able to figure one out before they uh, before they do it. But, you know, before they blurt it out, maybe throw you off, or maybe be like, oh, no, yeah, it is that, or whatever, uh, feel free to make your own guess. Anyways, continue, fellas. I am going to... <sighs> I don't think I want to say Prowler. I don't think he had Sinister Syndicate, but I can't think of. I'm pretty sure he had like Smoke Cloud or something. Um, I can't think of anyone else in that set that had Energy Explosion. The Goblins. Demo? Um, I'm gonna go with Demo Goblin. Demo Goblin. Okay. You're in that set. It's definitely in uh, or in uh, Amazing Spider-Man. I think one of the goblins doesn't actually get the option to equip the bombs. Yeah. I'll go... I think it's him which would mean that he would have to have energy explosion. So I'll I'm go going with, with uh, Aaron Davis slash Prowler. Okay, so there's an Aaron Davis and there's a Prowler. Yeah, Do so all, all, all three of those figures. All three of them. Aaron Davis, Prowler, and then <laughs> what's his other one? The Iron other Spider or something? Oh, oh, the both prowlers. Oh, not. I just think there was all two. Maybe Davis not. I don't no, there were two prowlers. Now you're right. Because there's like the Hobby Brown prowler, and there's a Aaron Davis prowler. Uh, Simeon, I'll give you all three of those because it's none of them. Uh, yeah, it is also not Demogoblin, <laughs> who's not in the set, but uh, He's not it was a good. Me. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good try. Uh, I would have said Jack o' Lantern. Uh, that oh, would have been a solid. Jack o' Lantern is the one I was. Picturing in my uh, head. Oh, sure. But it was not Jack uh, Lantern. You're saying. No, it wasn't Jack Lantern. I don't no, even remember him uh, being in that set. 009, a common Miss Bombshell, Miss Lana Baumgartner. Yeah. Do not remember that figure. Oh, Bombshell. Whatsoever. They're from the Ultimates universe. Helena Bonham Carter, is that what you said? Lana Baumgartner. Uh, oh, okay. Very close, though, Simeon. Very close. Get those ears checked, bud. Um,. <laughs> That's uh, from the inside, thanks to the. That's true, thanks right? The liquid earwax. I'm cleaned out. Uh, all right, uh, figure number two, clue number one. If you guys can redeem, so that's a point for me, by the way. If they don't is score a, a point, theme? I get it. Uh, there is a theme. Oh, theme being these figures are all have something similar or in common. It can be something as simple as being from the same set, or having the same hair color, or. No, all having the same power traded or something wacky like that, or something crazy like a state oh, or something that I feel like these characters <laughs> represent, or something weird, or like a meme from four years ago. You know, it could be a lot of things. I could say that these characters are the, you know, the, uh, you know, Spice Girls or something, for instance. Like, they could be whatever I want them to be, you know, like in sync get called for giving us all this free info of telling us things that it's not sadly it's yeah, just it's info true into his psyche it's not yeah. actually gonna help us <laughs> true though uh, all right simeon give me uh give me that clue number one for figure number two all right clue number one for figure two is clue number four clue number four is gonna be number of clicks this figure has seven clicks of life seven clicks of life slightly above average uh probably a like 70 point piece 70 and up i will say she hulk because we have okay. several several modern will, she hulks now i will say hulk. wolverine okay we have she hulk we have wolverine it is going to be neither of those <laughs> clue number 2 figure number 2 clue number 2 for figure 2 is going to be number 11 uh, number 11 is name of a trait uh, ugh, this is a tough one. Uh, I'll say the trait name is Signature Move, Natural Selection. Oh, so it's WWE. Um, natural Selection. 
I have no idea. I want to say that's... So I'm just going to throw out Mankind, because I like his sock. Okay. okay. We have a, one for Mankind. I f- Man, I want to say Natural Selections like Ric Flair, but I think it's actually like something, someone like AJ Styles or something. Uh, that's that's one that I'm actually not familiar with. I'll go with uh, good old AJ Styles because yeah. I yeah I do not know off the top of my head. One for mankind. One for AJ Styles is gonna be <laughs> neither of those. Third and final clue for figure number two. You guys are getting closer than you were with the last one though. I mean, it narrowed it down. Thank yeah, you, but that was yeah. a good narrow down. Yeah. Narrowed it down to one set ever made. Uh, final right, clue sorry. is number 16. Hey, number 16 is opening damage power. Not super helpful. So right now you know that their trait is signature move, natural selection. You know this character is seven clicks of life. And now you know their damage power is power. Power is the damage power. A little pink damage power. Natural selection. I want to say, see, natural selection sounds very like evolution which would be Randy Orton, Batista, Ric Flair, and Triple H. Um, and power makes me think of Triple H, because I know that there's at least one with it, but I don't remember that ever being a power that he had. Also, Batista and Randy Orton weren't clicked, so oh, don't sad. have to worry about oh, man. those two. I go to sleep crying every night that I can't RKO my opponent, so, knowing that we never got that Randy Orton. Yeah, out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. The sideline Maybe. active RKO. Sideline active RKO, something uh, like a breakaway or something, then let him RKO for free, Randy Orton. Oh, Rick so Flair good. had the, so he had the the figure four, he had the uh, Nature Boy special. There was two Rick Flairs, though. I don't know. I might be completely off on this, but um, I'm going to say Rick Flair. Yeah. Alex, I would say to I, guess Triple H because yeah. I can't. I'm, I'm, I have I'm no idea. Go with- a person that I know had multiple figures and say um, Charlotte, whatever the rest of her name is. Flair? Yeah, Charlotte Flair. Sure, is it Flair? All right. Okay, so we're doing Simeon, Rick Flair, the and Alex, Charlotte Flair, the father daughter duo. Hey, good on you, Alex, for not listening to Simeon and choosing Triple H because it is indeed Charlotte Flair. There we go. Neat. I was Dude, halfway there. Next guessing on a flare oh Whoa. gosh oh. guessing on a oh. flare it's a uh it's called her at one point alex at one point simeon currently at zero we move into our final modern age figure all right first clue for th- figure number three is clue number nine number nine is going to be top dial stats and team ability this character is a six nine sixteen one their team ability is Fantastic Four. Six, nine, fifteen, one. Sixteen. Sixteen, one. Oh, sixteen, one. Franklin. Going with Franklin. I'm going to go with... Like, just just the... Franklin. Franklin. Oh, just Franklin? Okay. I'm going to go with Artie. Okay. We have Uh, one for Franklin. It could be, like, Meek or Tong or any of those terrible children. <laughs> it could be a lot of people, yeah. Uh, so you're going for Artie, though. You're locking it yeah, in Yeah, I'm, I'm going with Artie. Uh, it is not Franklin. It is not Artie. All right. All right. Second clue is clue number four. Uh, clue number four is going to be number of clicks. Uh, it's not great for you guys, I guess. They have four clicks of life. Like all of the other kids. Yeah, that's a rough one. Uh, nine attack. So nine attack surprisingly does get rid of a few of the options i'm gonna go with one of the moloid kids i'm gonna say meek all right i'm i'm gonna pick i don't remember the specific numbers on any of these i'll just stick with with my theme of of picking not rock children and um and say valeria okay we've won for meek we've won for valeria it is gonna be alex coming in clutch it is valeria richards or just valeria Uh. Um, the future foundation. Uh, so now we got Charlotte Flair. It's Bombshell. It's Valeria. Do we want to hazard a guess at the theme before we jump into Golden Age? So if we, if are we... they all blondes? I mean, they're all they're all women. Um, they're all girls. Yeah, I know Charlotte no, I and Valeria are both blonde. Bombshell has. Okay. Uh, let's just let's jump Bombshell. into the Golden Age then, shall we? Right. Golden Age is the one through ten uh, for Bad Samaritan. 
Uh, Simeon. You said that like I, I wasn't completely ready. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I, know. I knew you were ready and waiting. I just figured, oh, yeah, he might just need that go-ahead, you know, because I know he 100% had it 1 through 10 pulled up for Golden Age. No, I know he had it ready. <laughs> All right, uh, clue number one for the Golden Age number figure. One. That's top dial things, um, but it's not actually top dial stats and stuff. It's what's on the top of their dial that we can understand. So we know that this figure is a common we know that this figure is from the Captain America set from 2011. We know that's a 025 common. We know they have six range. We know they're 57 points, and we know they don't have a team ability. That is the top dial stuff. No On top of ability. the actual. Oh, and we know they have uh, uh, no special combat symbols. Fist, shield with no stripe, and then first. Mm, 57 points. No team ability. I don't remember the Captain America set enough, but I would imagine like Dum Dum Dugan and those guys, like any of those figures, would have shield. And likewise, like any generics would have like Hydra or something. Fifty-seven mm. points common. I will say I don't even know if he's in the set, but I'll say nope, not Paladin. I'm not gonna guess Paladin. It Is the Gold Age figure also part of the theme? Yes. Ooh. I will just say Peggy Carter. I don't even know if she's in the set. I'll say Sharon Carter, the blonde one. <laughs> uh, you know, I appreciate that, guys. Good job. Uh, however, not only is it not either of those figures, none of those figures were in the Captain America set. Uh, sorry, I just... Were they, were they not? These, they were not. No, no, they, were not they were not in the Golden Age. The Captain character America. of Captain America would be in the set, Captain America. Yeah. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> Peggy, no. Or no. All right, next I'm clue. To, right, clue, number, movie with you. clue number one. Clue number one. Oh, boy. I don't know why I put my phone down. I'm not using it for this. Uh, clue number one is the same thing. So you already did clue number one. Let's roll that again. Oh. Clue number six. Ooh, special power. Uh, character doesn't have a special power. That's a rough one. Because that would have been the no name and power. the description of it. Yeah. No special power, no team ability, 57 points, common. I mean, that's kind of par for the course for an older set, common. They didn't always get special powers. Yeah. No, the no team ability is what's making this, like... Yeah. They really did, like, just right. slap shield on anything back then. Or, like, Hydra on anything. Um, man, I will say uh, there is... Okay, so there did used to be a Serpent Society team ability, but they stopped making it, like, right before this Captain America set. So if there was a Serpent Society team member, they probably didn't get the key, or the team ability. I don't remember what serpents were in this set if any but i'll say cotton mouth that sounds wrong i don't think it was that okay cotton mouth is that a character yeah oh, yeah it's a type of no, snake yeah, oh, yeah totally. cotton mouth snake okay um i i can i can name the snake kind of snake it's a snake um <laughs> name is uh, a snake. i'm gonna say there's no way they wouldn't have like the shield team ability, but I'm gonna say Quake. Okay. So Alex is getting closer. There was at least a Quake in the set. Uh there was not a cottonmouth in the set, but it's still neither of those. I, we've at least guessed a character that's in the set. Yeah, so we we have like, like half point no, for that. Out of the like seventy characters in the set, you do know that that one isn't in it. Uh all right. Third and final clue for your Golden Age figure. I mean, Alex is still comfortably taking this home unless I somehow tie it. You guys don't get it, but that's okay. We'll still give it to Alex here if we can get the theme. Simeon. All right. Uh, last clue is going to be clue number two. Number two is... Ah, so that sucks. So it's HC Realms comment, and because it's a Golden Age figure, there's about 30 HC Realms comments on them, so nice. I'm going to tell you the ones that have the most text although some of these might be replies and i'm just gonna read the non i'm just gonna read the reply not the quoted text so uh names you can choose comments from r chalk i say chalk and not the other potential way to pronounce it uh no man 61 mankeys uh pickster and then here's another good one gosh darn it jason 
and Psycho Hippie. Ooh, that was a good brick attack. That's about it. So we got Psycho Hippie. We got Gosh Darn It, Jason. Uh, we have R Chalk, No Man, and 61 Mankeys for the biggest uh, bricks of text here. Are you, are you going to read them to us? We we'll have to, we have to pick oh, one I, of the commenters. No. Yeah. Oh, and, and okay. Random. I was so, like, like, I felt like I was having a stroke. I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> so that's right. just because he was yet. talking about HC Realms in general. Probably. Um, I'm feeling 61 Mankeys. That seems like someone who's got something to say. Or why not? Yeah, we have okay. nothing else to go on. So he, it's funny, he doesn't actually quote the reply, but he's replying to someone. It's really funny here. Uh, I'm obviously going to be taking out any instance of this person's name and saying like they or them or X or Y or Z or something. But anyways, uh, at no man, what do you mean by 30 second wonder? Just curious as to whether you think she would only last that long fielded or if you are referring to her comic book significance. If it is the latter, I take it you haven't read Marvel in a long time or even stepped into a comic shop all year, lol. She's been significant for a while, and the existence of the 616 Earth is dependent upon killing her. As far as the fig goes, anyone who can dish out RCE more than once a turn from stealth, mind you, is a winner in my book. She'll be more than worth her points. July 4th, 2011, that was commented by 61 Mankeys. You know, I feel like the comment should have been helpful, but the existence of 616 is dependent on killing her, and I have no idea who that would be. So, yeah, 616 (laughs) has been dependent on killing a few ladies at certain points. In 2011, I want to say... I want to say Sin? Was this around Fear itself? Would that have been Sin? Yes, is that we're going to lock in? Yeah, I'm going to lock in that. The only other thing I could think would be, like, Morgan Le Fay, but she hasn't really like put 616 on edge in a while right at least Alex. i don't remember um Wanda? I'm, I'm gonna grab no, not one costa i okay simeon is correct it is sin uh captain america is your 25 sin or cynthia schmidt as you might want to call <laughs> is her that really put her cool. name short for her? yeah oh yeah 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 no her name cynthia name's with an s yeah yeah uh that's the the only reason I even came close. I think that was the first guess that I had that was actually in the set. That uh, the was, comment right. about like their universe depending on killing her. I was like, man, that's that's the last time I remember a villain being at that point where they were like, we must kill her. And I was like, whoa, yeah. ease up yeah. there, Cap. Cap didn't kill her though. On. All right, so it is Sin. Just to recap, it's Sin, it's Valeria, it's Bombshell, and it's Charlotte Flair. Uh, what are our guesses on theme? Apologies to DC fans. I couldn't think of any that fit theme, even though technically there's tons of ones that fit theme. These were the ones that came to my mind. Is it like bad girls? Mm, oh, yeah, I'd be mean to Valeria like that. She's not a bad. She's not a bad girl. Uh, I, yeah. Maybe. I mean, she did get named by Doom. It's true. <laughs> for something. Are you right, though? Does that make her bad, though? Yeah. Read the bad he sees scene. Her, he dies inside. He cries every time. Oh my gosh, Simeon. <laughs> All right. Uh, no guesses on theme. Um, I mean, like Valeria makes it weird because, like, she's she's a child, and uh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna just say they're they're all girls. Just the most surface level okay. observation you can make. My guess was bad girls. I, I yeah, something okay. something We're along the lines girls. of females okay. that are bad. Yeah. So, technically, the theme is true for every female ever, because they are all this. But what I'm more so going for here is that they are all daughters, but, like, known for being someone. Oh, famous daughters. Oh, okay. no, that makes sense. daughters, yeah. Yeah, the daughter of Reed, the daughter of Johann Schmidt. I don't, I don't know who Bombshell is, so... She's got a trait called mother daughter duo, which just made her. Oh okay. yeah, there was there was two different bombshells. One of them yeah. is the daughter of the other one. Yeah, the com- I'm assuming. So I am just assuming the common one is the daughter because she has exact same dial as her mom, but her stats are less, and then she's got one click less. So I'm just I'm just assuming the daughter's not as whatever talented the bombshelling as her mother. <laughs> uh, we're at about an hour thirty ish minutes. 
Um, I think we'll save questions for next week for a potentially slower uh, week, but who also knows? Hero Clicks might be wild, because I, uh, I want to go play some Evil Dead. I'm going to keep it honest with you, listener, keeping it real with Alex and Simeon. Uh, as much as I'd love to get these questions, I know, sorry, Malcolm, uh, we'll get to them next week, because it's my show, and that's what I want to do. Uh, any objections, gentlemen? No? Fantastic. Yeah, likely uh, by next week we'll have... You know, spoilers from a whole new set that we didn't know about, like we did this right. week. Right. Exactly. You know? Street I Fighter guess... 2. It'll come out. Yeah. 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 Okay. Get those hot takes in. Yeah. Okay. We got Street Fighter 2. Uh, I can't wait to see the preview for the Undead 2 set as yeah. well. That's going to be awesome. amazing they made a, uh, a whole set based off of Riddler's United, the uh, oh, fan what? fiction I wrote of heck? an alternate oh, universe gosh. where the counselor, the Council of Riddler's the Council of Nigmas meet and uh, finally foil the Batman. Wow, what a great set! No, beautiful, that... great simian, okay. not beautiful. <laughs> uh, Alex, let's have you shout out the store one last time before we sign off. Yeah, so we're the stadium. We're in Frankenmuth and Bay City, Michigan. Uh, we're returning to events in June. Um, the first one uh, back is uh, Wednesday, June eighth, in. Frankenmuth, and then Thursday, June 9th in Bay City. Uh, we are, are really excited about it. We've, we've run, like, uh, Rock States in the past. That's something we've done. Obviously, WKOs and stuff. We um, I'm looking forward to being able to try to do some of that kind of level stuff again at some point in the future. Don't have any specific um, details for that yet. But um, I'm really excited. We're we're gonna hopefully have a lot of fun and, and roll a lot of dice and and throw figures at each other and be happy about it. Fantastic! All right, awesome. What else is something you can be happy about? Getting yeah. some sweet deals online <laughs> at a place like CoolStuffInc.com. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. If yeah, you totally. uh, if you're looking to pick up some singles or sealed products, new, old, in between, silver? Question mark. Uh, check out CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find the latest, greatest HeroClix products. CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5 for 5% off Cool Stuff Inc. order. And like always, be trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional HeroClix. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Epic trails.